Today we're going to show you how to get more complex camera moves in your AI films. This animated AI short won $10,000 in the world's first AI animation competition. And the creator, Hal Watmo, is going to show us how to create shots just like this. Real quick, the film follows the story of a young man who spends too much time at work and his mentor. But what did the production workflow really look like? Hal is about to show us how he used a combination of mid-journey, after effects, and traditional editing techniques to create smooth camera movements. And you're going to want to see, unlike traditional film that some of these steps seem a little bit out of order, but the end result is really mind-blowing. So I want to start with the first shot in your film where there is essentially there's an old man cleaning a window and then there's this dynamic zoom through the other door um, where we first meet the protagonist. Can you walk me through how you achieve that camera movement? So this was actually the most important shot of the whole film because I used this shot this was the first shot I got that I really liked the style of and the tone and the color. So I use this shot as a style reference for every single shot that I generated in mid journey afterwards. So this was kind of the template that I used. This took me the longest out of all the shots in the film, but I also think it was kind of one of the most important to get the production value straight off the bat and also introduce the two characters in the same setting. So the actual initial frame of this, this is actually four frames. So then, yeah, you can see this is the mid journey image that I've cropped the edges off and then um, zoomed out. And then you can, you can see that this guy is obviously just photoshopped in not very well. In fact, I just did it, you know, very quickly put some shadow on him, put some highlight on his face. But um, as soon as you animate these in a video, um, those things that get composited really nicely. So your first image I found very quickly doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because the video generator kind of smooths it all out for you and kind of does that comping for you, which is really good. So this was the initial um, one that came out with, at, with, with the guy just comped in. And as, he, as you can see, he just stands there. This is what, this is what Kling and, and VO were doing every time is they do the motion nicely because I had the start frame and I had the end frame, but they couldn't get that this guy needed to move. So I had to cut him out as a static wide and have him cleaning the window as a separate shot. This one on the top here, this layer, uh, is, the, is the guy moving basically. Um, and then as we move in, I had to get him back to like a natural position so that I could make the join. So I kind of reversed, I reversed the shot. So he kind of, the, the clip that came out, he starts cleaning like that, but I uh, reversed it. So he's cleaning and then he comes back to that initial starting frame position so that I could then make the join into just the move in where he's just standing there static. And then this frame, this frame here is, as you can see, it's all morphy as you come in. Uh, so I just, I did another generation and just comp that over the top just so it was, a, so, so you weren't getting that kind of messy morphy side door or basically as you came in. So yeah, it was kind of, I, so these are also, this this top one is also a uh, After Effects render. So this is kind of like already had some stuff done on it. So yeah, it's those three shots together to get that, that smooth move in basically. Yeah, it was start, using start and end frame a lot in clean, basically. So yeah, that guy's, uh, that's actually his start frame is where he's standing there like that. Um, and obviously the whole thing is also a start and end frame in that this is the, my, the frame that I got out of mid journey is this one, that's my end frame. And then the, the, the start frame was the one that I zoomed out using the mid journey editor, built all this frame around here uh, and that became the start frame. So kind of doing it in reverse. This is kind of slightly unique to AI in that you're starting with the end of your frame. You're starting with where you want to get to and you can build back. But I think that's quite a dynamic thing that you can do in mid journey is that if you get a really nice frame and then you start moving back and start building out elements, you can get some really nice dynamic moves through scenes. No shot's gonna come out perfectly, uh, I realize so yeah. It's, you know, using elements from different generations to basically, you know, bring them together in a kind of culmination to get that perfect shot that you wanted. 
Now, in this shot, you were able to keep the character on the right, the protagonist, uh, very still, like he's listening, while you have the character on the left moving and um, lip syncing, which is really challenging to get with the video generators, right? Because they're tempted to make both characters talk. Yeah, and that's also, that's also a problem across animation as a whole. When you animate it, they're always trying to talk, even if you're not prompting them to talk. But yeah, this was one that, um, uh, I had to, I realized that after that initial opening shot, yeah, I realized, yeah, you can cut up all the shots. So basically you can see here, um, I generated this guy, the, the younger guy, uh, as a still. I comped in the older guy from my character references into, from Photoshop, quite roughly, uh, again, uh, knowing that it's going to get uh, smoothed out much nice much better than I could ever do in After Effects uh, using the uh, video generator. So if I turn this off, you can see that's the initial image. Um, and then I've just comped him over the top um, and then animated. So if I uh, match friend this up, you can see that's, that is the video. It's in its entirety. It's a square frame, one to one. Uh, obviously using Hedra, so you had to, I had to do a one-to-one -one frame ratio. Um, and then, yeah, I've just comped it over the top final image. So actually that, that guy on the right, the younger guy, is that's just a static, that's just a static frame. That's, you can see that's just a still. I didn't want him to move at all. I couldn't get him to stay stationary while animating him. So I just kept it as a static frame. And the guy on the left did all the moving for us. Um, but. Hedra is quite good in the fact that it even if you look in the background, it it um, animates the clouds and it does quite a good job, Hedra, actually, as a, as a model. So this next frame, this next shot, you essentially have two characters speaking on a split screen here um, with this diagonal comic book style cut through the middle. How did you, yeah, how did you achieve that? So yeah, this, um, this shot actually uh, was probably after the uh, that, the opening shot. This was actually the second hardest shot to to, to make, weirdly, um, because I used uh, an S ref code to get the style along with the style reference, and it just couldn't do a. It just was fighting against the composition, so I couldn't get that squared off symmetrical frame of this old guy talking to camera. So. Um, it's took a ton of generations. I think I did well over 200 images just on this one frame, which seems kind of ridiculous, but it was actually, obviously, probably one of the most important frames to get right. So basically, this 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 opening shot, this was what this was one head, Hedra generation, and then this next shot, I then did another Hedra generation over the blue, uh, over the blue um, background, and right here is where I you can see I've dissolved between the two just as they as that that moves so they're actually two separate generations um but because yeah as you say the start frame is um the same um it, it matched up reasonably well obviously there's a little bit of um shadowing i wanted them both to obviously be talking the same scene which is obviously quite tricky as we've already said but i thought you could have it slightly more dynamic for this kind of orange and uh, blue this is kind of to symbolize when they're having a little bit of a disagreement uh not that they fight but you know um a difference of opinion so i thought it was quite a fun way to kind of have them both in the same spot both in the same scene um in a slightly more dynamic way that also allowed you to transition into this kind of flashback um because then we go into this guy's memories basically yeah, so this is, again, this is probably, uh, this is, well, actually it wasn't as tricky as you think because um, everything worked pretty seamlessly on this one. So it was, again, I generate, this was, this was the image I generated in mid journey, this final frame, obviously in color. And then I zoomed out in mid journey. Um, and so to like here, and then I built out all of these sections. It took a couple of generations and kind of fiddling around to get it so they all looked different enough um, and then in Photoshop I comped in some window frames so this was the uh, very very first generation that came out of um, Kling 
um, was this move through. And it got it pretty much perfect. The only thing I didn't like was the fact that the, the frames morph at the last second. Basically what I did was I put it into After Effects and using the, the comp of the window frames that I'd done in Photoshop, I just cut out these two guys um, uh, into their own separate layers and then and just put them as a 3D layer basically opening up. And that, that hid the, the morphing. Uh, you're still getting a little bit of it as you come through, but because of the motions pretty swift, you, um, you can't see it. So you get this kind of nice opening window, which is also nicer as well, you know, rather than going through the frames, the little window opens, it kind of feels like you're going into his story. Thank you, Hal. I learned so much um, looking through these different shots with you. Thank you for sharing your workflows. And I'm really excited to see your next film. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you for having me on. It's been absolutely lovely. I love talking about it. I love doing it. So yeah, thank you so much. And congratulations on winning the competition. Uh, first place in our AI animation competition co-hosted with Promise. It's a beautiful story um, that in, and the, all the techniques that you used really brought the story together. Thank you so much. I mean, it's been a really lovely experience and everyone at Curious Refuge is just fantastic. I think it's such an important space to have that place that you feel safe to kind of play and explore. And I think, you know, it's a very um, vulnerable thing to do, especially when you're doing these solo projects. So to know that you've got that kind of support and safety net that uh, Curious Refuge offers, I think is priceless. Just in case you're wondering, it took Hal about 200 hours to finish this film. You can watch Hal's full short film on our AI film gallery on the Curious Refuge website. And if you want to bring your own original stories to life, we would love to help. We hope you enjoyed learning more about how to get complex camera movements in your AI films. Thanks so much for watching.